Welcome to Race and Culture in the Americas, Introduction. Welcome, bienvenido. And your instructor for Race and Culture in the Americas is Bill Barraza. So, Race and Culture in the Americas, and this is day one online presentation, Race, Class, Gender, and Miscegenation in Colonial America, 1492, 1821. Race and culture in the Americas. Race, class, gender, and miscegenation. This week's topics, repeopling of the new world, native communities, African slavery and forced migration, mestizos, mulatos, castizos, moriscos, lobos, gambujos, and their friends, gender and sex in America. Race and culture in the Americas. Repeopling of the New World. The repeopling of the New World occurred at multiple levels. Europeans continued to migrate to various areas of the Americas. Europeans and their descendants continued to construct their various interpretations of native peoples. At the same time, the forced migrations of Africans who were also racialized came to play a major role in the New World. Repeopling of the New World Europeans, natives, and Africans produced offspring that were quickly placed within a European hierarchy of peoples. While all this was going on, native communities survived and continued to practice their culture and of all, albeit in a hostile environment of European domination. Native communities. Natives in the Americans could be differentiated between sedentary and non-sedentary communities. While there were great variety within both groups, Europeans developed various techniques when approaching these two types of native communities. For example, the Spanish developed a system of labor exploitation for sedentary natives and a system of management for non-sedentary natives, the mission system. The system of labor for sedentary natives was known as the encomienda. And over to the right, we have an image of what the encomienda looked like. You can see there someone observing, monitoring, supervising the workers on their uh, machines. Native communities, the encomienda, more detail. From Meredith back, from Meredith Scott's the encomienda, the encomienda system is deeply entrenched in the history and culture of South and Central America, and is one of the most damaging institutions that the Spanish colonialists implemented in the New World. The system came to signify the oppression and exploitation of Native Americans, although its originators did not set out with such intent. Native communities, how did they survive? Native faced a dramatic demographic collapse in the first three generations after the arrival of the Europeans. A combination of European policies and susceptibility to European diseases resulted in a major decline in native populations, especially in sedentary communities. Race and culture in the Americas, native communities. In Mexico, the population may have been as high as 20 million in 1519, but it collapsed to a little over 2 million in 1605. While these numbers are only estimates, it is clear that there was a striking demographic collapse of the native population in the first century after the Spanish conquest of Mexico. And as you can see here in the graph, you'd see the collapse by smallpox and in the millions, right, in the millions, there was no so when you compare that uh, to recent, well, this was in the millions, and now, of course, there are vaccines against uh, smallpox and these other diseases.
Okay, Native Communities. Read chapter one from David Cook's Born to Die. As you can see, the population collapse in Mexico. African slavery and forced migration. Africans were introduced into the New World as a source of labor, especially after the decline in the native population. One encounters a plantation-style production on some Mediterranean islands, as well as islands in the Atlantic Ocean, including Madeira, the Azores, Cape Verde, and the Canaries. European use of slave labor and plantation system predated European use of African slave labor in the New World. And here are the slave routes to the Americas. Uh, you could see there to South America and to North America. African slavery and forced migration. As the demand for labor grew, Africans provided a new source. Thus, as sugar plantations appeared on the Caribbean islands, the flow of African slaves grew. African slavery and forced migration. The increased demand for African labor coincided with Portugal's desire to find another trade route to Asian markets after the mid 1400s. As they moved down the west coast of Africa, they engaged in trading with the communities on the coast. Among the products they acquired through trade were Africans as slaves. And as the probability of slaves grew, the Portuguese set up factories on the islands off the coast of Africa to trade. And here are the examples here. And the pictures of the uh, Portuguese arriving along the coast. The arrival of Europeans in Africa. Questions of the week. Now that you have completed the week's presentations, you have these tasks to complete before you are done. Turn in your weekly answers to the questions, go to the blog forum and discuss any questions provided.